Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen and welcome to Heronbrook Farm Kitchen. It is fantastic to have you here as always and this week, yes I did say week, we're going to be making the king of breads. We're going to make sourdough. Okay, let's talk about sourdough. It is the most revered of all of the breads. People charge an absolute fortune for this sort of bread in London. One of these might cost you eight or nine pounds. This one has been made with some rye flour, some wholemeal flour and some white flour and absolutely no yeast whatsoever. The only thing we've used is a sourdough starter. And what I'm gonna be doing over the course of the week is I'm gonna be showing you first of all how to make the starter which takes five days and we do a little bit every single day um, and then I'm going to show you how to make the bread and the bread itself takes 24 hours so we start it one evening uh, we let it prove overnight and then we bake it the following afternoon so that it's ready for the following evening let's just briefly talk about sourdough why is it called the king of breads well it just has the most incredible depth of flavor um, it's hard to explain if you've never eaten it the first thing is the title, sour. It's not really sour. What it is, is packed full of amazing depth of flavor that you simply don't get with breads that have been made quickly using ordinary baker's yeast. Then you've got the structure. You've got a lovely crust on the outside and inside you've got lovely super aerated bubbles. It tastes amazing. It's great toasted. It's great untoasted, however you want it. I'm sure you are gonna absolutely love it. So let's jump in and make some sourdough. So what I've got in here, I've got 20 grams of rye flour and I've got 20 grams of water. So this is the first stage. Literally just pour the water in and just use a teaspoon or something like that to mix it up together. Um, and then I'm just gonna stick it on the scale because I'm also gonna add five grams of honey, which is about a teaspoon. And you probably don't need to be that precise to be honest with you. There we go, five grams of honey. Just scrape that round. What we're gonna end up with is a little paste at the bottom of the bowl, just something like that. So there we go. So just got that little paste at the bottom of the bowl. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna cover this with cling film. I'm gonna use a knife to just make a small hole in the top. I'm gonna to leave it in this kitchen, which is a moderately warm, kitchen for 24 hours and then I'll come back and do the next stage. See you tomorrow. Okay, welcome back to day two. I've got 40 grams of rye flour in here and 40 grams of water. So just put the water into the rye flour and then just using a spoonula or a spatula, we're gonna mix that together to make a paste, just like that. Quite a thick paste. Stick it on the scale because we are going to add five grams more of honey, which is about a teaspoon. There we go. And also into that, this is what I made yesterday, the 20 grams, as you can see, mucky brown sludge. So we will just scrape that in as well. whole lot now. Stir up. Quite a stiff paste. And you can see I'm using a slightly larger bowl now as it gets bigger and we will progressively increase the size of the bowl as we go through the week. So just form that into a nice little shape like that. That's it for today. I'm just gonna cover it with cling film again, make a small hole in it with a knife and leave it for another 24 hours. We'll see you tomorrow. Okay, day three of sourdough starter. Same drill as before. We've got yesterday's here. I'm gonna get the cling film off. And you can see there, it's still looking like a brown goo, although you can probably not see on the camera, but it's just starting to be a little bit of bubbling. So what I'm gonna to do today, uh, I've got 80 grams of rye flour in this bowl, 80 grams of water. There's no honey today. So I'm just gonna stir that round, make it into a paste. 
and then I'm going to add in the mixture from the last two days. And mix this whole lot together. Just like that, shape it back into a ball again. And then exactly the same as yesterday, we're going to cover it with cling film, make a small hole in the top, and we'll leave it for a, a further 24 hours. So I'll see you tomorrow. Okay, welcome back, day four. So what we're going to do today is change it a little bit. It's been rye flour up till now. You can see there we're starting to get quite a bit of bubbling happening now in this. We're going to change it and we're going to use strong white flour. You could actually use plain flour as well, but we use strong white flour, uh, 100 grams of flour, 100 grams of water, exactly the same as before. We've gone to a slightly larger bowl, mix this up, get it into a nice paste and then get the cling film off here and we scrape all of this in maybe see the bubbles, maybe not scrape all of that in, don't have to get every single little bit and we just mix all of this up together exactly the same as we've done before give it a really good mix up scrape down the sides And that's it, and we're just going to cover this with cling film, exactly the same as before, cover it with cling film nice and tight, little hole in the top with a knife, and leave it for another 24 hours. So I'll see you tomorrow. Okay, welcome back, day five, uh, which you'll be pleased to know is the last day of preparing the starter, and tomorrow or the day after, we're going to be able to get on with making the actual loaf. So I don't know if you can see, it's a lot more liquid than it was, which is a good sign and there are just some little bubbles starting to appear on the surface. We've got 100 grams of strong white flour in the bowl, 100 grams of water again, and just like we've done on previous days, we're gonna mix that white flour up into a paste. Uh, and then what I'm gonna do differently this time is I'm not gonna put all of this mixture in, I'm only gonna put about half of it in don't need to be too precise and it's got that classic sourdough starter smell now so half of that in there and exactly the same as before just going to mix it in just like that and then we're going to cover it with cling film exactly as before nice tight seal, make a hole in the lid and we're going to leave that for another 24 hours uh, and then we'll be ready to make a loaf. See you tomorrow. Okay, good evening, welcome back. Uh, we're going to jump in and make the sourdough itself now. I say good evening because I'm going to make it now. Uh, I'm going to mix it, we're going to get it in a bowl and then we're going to leave it overnight to prove and then tomorrow morning we're going to shape it, get it in the basket and then we'll bake it tomorrow evening. So it's a 24 hour bake following five days, if you've been following along, of making the starter. So let's talk about the ingredients. Uh, we've got the starter that we made over the last few days. Uh, we're going to use 200 grams of that. We've got 500 grams of flour. I'm actually using a mixture. I've got 350 grams of strong white flour. I've got 100 grams of wholemeal and 50 grams of rye flour. Uh, 300 grams of water and 12 grams of salt. And that's it, the most simple imaginable. Right, so I've weighed 200 grams of the starter into the bowl of the stand mixer. I'm going to go in on top of that with all of the flour. Uh, on top of the flour I'm just going to stick in the salt. I'm just going to give that a little mix just to um, mix the salt in with the flour. I'm not going to dip in to the starter below and then in with the milk and then we'll get this on the stand mixer and we're going to mix it on a slow speed until it just comes together as normal and then we will mix it on a slightly higher speed for nine minutes. So here's the rest of the starter that we made. Um, I've just given it a bit of a mix up. You can see it's all lovely and bubbly. Uh, the amazing thing about sourdough is this starter now will last literally forever uh, and you can use it every week to make a new loaf and you make a bit more and you keep a bit and the longer you keep feeding it, 
and, and adding more flour and water to it, the more the flavours will develop. So it's absolutely amazing. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put it into this pot here, which is just uh, the cruze pot. Uh, it's got a wooden lid and I've removed the rubber seal from it uh, because I find that it quite likes to have a little bit of air. So I'm just going to scrape this in to here. I'll give it a bit of a feed. Uh, I normally feed it once every couple of days if uh, we're not actively baking and every day if we're actively baking. Um, and it always gets fed with a 50-50 mix of flour and water. So I'm probably going to go in here now with 100 grams of flour, 100 grams of water, stir it up, put the lid on and leave it to one side and away we go. If you're going away for a week or so or for two weeks, just cover it in cling film, stick it in the fridge. When you come back, reactivate it with some flour and water uh, over a couple of days and it will be back to bubbling away and absolutely amazing. So good luck with that. I'm going to go back over to the stand mixer because I'm sure that sounds like it's combined and we'll turn the speed up. So it was quite sticky when it started but it's come together beautifully now. Not dissimilar to a normal dough. Uh, it's quite a wet one, we've put quite a lot of water in this because that's what you really need to do with sourdough to develop the bubbles. Uh, but that's come together beautifully. We'll give it nine more minutes and then we'll get it turned out into a bowl. Right, the time has just gone off. So I'm a little bit behind the times. I've just put some rapeseed oil in the bowl, just giving that a quick rub round, and I put some oil on the table, worktop, just rub that round like that so you've got a nice oily surface to work it on. You certainly don't want to be adding any more flour at this stage. Okay, so this is a very sticky dough. I, I don't mind telling you that. Uh, they always are sourdoughs. It's going to stick to your fingers. It's going to stick to the... Uh, plastic scraper. You don't have to put it onto the table and shape it if I'm honest with you. I like to do that when I'm doing a long overnight prove to give it a bit of shape and structure um, but you can just tip it straight into the bowl which you've seen me do before but actually with the oil on it will come together roughly. Look at that very sticky. It will come together and you can just use the scraper to get some shape into it um, and then you can get it into the bowl like that. So there we go, stuck to my fingers, it's in the bowl, all beautiful. What I'm going to do now is cover it with cling film and it's going to sit in this kitchen, it's going to sit right there on that worktop. It's reasonably cool in here and it's going to sit there until tomorrow morning uh, when we will get it turned out and into a banneton for its second proof. So a very long 12 hour proof, first proof for this Saturday. I'll see you in the morning. Right, good morning, welcome back. It's the following morning, it's about eight o'clock, 8 a.m. And as you can see here, the sourdough has risen magnificently overnight. It's a bit fragile at the moment, but I'm just gonna take the cling film off, get rid of that, uh, get some flour down, the flour won't get incorporated now, so we can use flour. And then I'm carefully just going to scrape this out. It will still be quite sticky. I'll scrape that out. Smells amazing. And I'm just going to use the scraper now to shape this into a ball. You can see it's slightly sticking to the table, but actually once you've got a bit of flour on the outside, you can work it quite easily and what we want is a nice tight ball like that there we go beautiful thing so what we've got here is a cane banneton and what I've done is just line the inside of that with some rye flour and the dough is going to prove in this upside down for the rest of today. And then at about four o'clock this afternoon, I would guess, but I'll keep checking it through the day. It will have risen up, it will fill the banneton, um, and then we can turn it out and get it baked. I'm just going to leave it on the side again, uh, but instead of covering it with cling film, I'm just going to cover it with a, uh, I'm going to cover it with a baking cloth. So carefully put that down there. 
get some flour on my hands, turn this over, make sure we've got a nice pinched seam here at the bottom and get it in to the banneton and that is it. So this will go over here, I will cover it with a baking cloth and I will come back to you at about four o'clock this afternoon and we will get it baked. See you then. Okay, not quite four o'clock, it's actually just gone three o'clock and as you can see, that is looking absolutely amazing. We're full up to the brim here, it is very soft and delicate. Um, so what we're gonna do, I've been preheating the oven uh, for about the last 30, 40 minutes or so at 240 degrees. I'm gonna get the really hot baking tray out, I'm gonna stick it down on here uh, I'm going to turn the bread out onto the baking tray, slash the top, and get it straight in the oven. And I need to do all of that quite quickly, so I'm probably not going to give you a big commentary. Look at that, absolutely fantastic. And I've got my razor blade in my lame, and I'm just going to do two curved cuts like that and we're going to get this straight in the oven. We're going to hit a steam and then I'm going to turn it down to 240, wrong, I'm going to turn it down to 220 for the first five minutes and then I'm going to turn it down again to 200 for a further 25 minutes. So I'll have 30 minutes of baking in all. And I'm giving it a double hit of steam. So I'll see you in 30 minutes. Okay, time has just gone off. Let's get it out and see how it looks. Wow, look at that. Absolutely fantastic. Classic shape, beautiful brown, nice and hollow underneath. So there we go, I'm going to leave this to cool on the rack now for a good long time, at least an hour, it's a big loaf, maybe even two, uh, and then I'll come back to you, we'll cut into it and we'll take a look. Okay, it's taken us a week to get to this stage, I certainly hope it's worth it, I know it will be. Um, here it is, lovely and cool, as you can see, you saw it at the beginning of the video as well, uh, an absolutely beautiful sourdough shape, you've got the lovely swirl pattern from where it was proving in the banneton. Let's cut into it and take a look. Lovely crusty outside. You can probably hear. Look at that. Absolutely beautiful. You've got a, a variety of different bubble sizes, which is classic sourdough. You've got a slightly spongy texture inside. Um, I literally can't wait. So, thank you ever so much for watching. Do hit subscribe, hit that like button, leave us some comments, ask us some questions. It's been absolutely fabulous baking this today and I look forward to seeing you on the next one.